Roses are red, violets are blue. When Cain calls your man, he'd better choose you. So, Leanne, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of condense five pages, and you've been with him for less than a year. My gosh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Nick is in Dallas now. Yeah, right now he's in Dallas. Okay. So, when you say in here that you moved in with him and neither of you two have ever lived with anybody, or so you thought, in parentheses. Right. But come to find out that not only has he lived with somebody, but he was married. Mm, Okay. How did you find this out? Um, I was cleaning out the garage like clearing out some boxes of like leftover Christmas stuff and I found some paperwork and um, I was just like going through it to figure out what's within the box you know what I mean it wasn't my stuff it was his and I wouldn't know what to do with it and so I was like looking through to see what it was and I found a marriage license that belonged to him and I guess he was married to some lady named Shannon okay and when when was this it was dated in 2012 Okay. And did it, were there any I, uh, was there divorce paperwork? Included? I did not see any divorce paperwork in this box, but that obviously I'm like went into shock when I saw this. Like I couldn't believe it. I was like, "What? Okay. Why wouldn't he have told me he was married?" And so then I started doing some more investigating of like what he's been up to. Okay. And that's where you and found that's where you found Shannon doesn't live here. No, she lives in Dallas, which is where he told me he is now. Is he? Do you think he's still married? I don't know anything right now. As soon as I like found that marriage certificate license thing, I was like, I my whole world's upside down. No, I, like, I, I don't I know understand what's going that. On. How do you know he's in Dallas? And and how do you know where he's staying? Because I so I asked him if he could like print me out his itinerary so that because like his cell phone's always dying and so like in case I need to get a hold of him. Oh, smart! You no, know, I know. So so then I asked him to give me his itinerary. So I okay. That's so you I you got his itinerary him, so. knowing that you want to set him up. Exactly. Okay. So uh, am I miss I, I, am I missing anything that's important here? I after I found the marriage license, obviously I was like shake into my core and I started doing some like investigating like I never would like dig through his phone I'm not a jealous type but like obviously after I find a marriage license I looked through his phone and I found like I guess my friend had told me like in the deleted pictures they're there for like 30 more days or something unless you like like manually empty it Mm -hmm. and so I went through his I went through his gallery and it all looked like just pictures of me and him but then when I went through the deleted pictures I saw this woman but Shannon, and I also looked through like his recent calls and his text messages, and there's a number that he's calling all the time, all these incoming, outgoing calls and text messages, and the number is a Dallas area code. I googled it. Two one four. Area codes for Dallas. Yes. So obviously, if what do we find out if you delete a picture? It's how many days? I think it's thirty. Thirty. Yeah. All right. So he's obviously seen her within the past thirty days. Yeah, and he's trying to be slick because he did delete the pictures. But he didn't. And he just left in yeah. his gallery and pictures of me and him. Yeah. But then, like, he didn't realize I could. You know, it burns a lot of people. Still. Believe it or not, they don't realize that if you can delete a picture from your gallery, but it's not truly deleted from your phone or your computer or whatever for thirty more days. Um, okay, so we know his itinerary. We know where he is in Dallas. He stay at. Okay. Um, may I? I'm. I have a cell phone, but I'd prefer... Can I try calling his hotel room? Yeah. Okay, because here's my thought. If he's working, he won't answer his hotel room. That makes sense. If he is working, he's yeah. probably out working. Right. Or doing whatever he does. All right? Hold, so hold on one, one quick second. Or if he... Get, I, if, he may have given you... The, the other thing, too, is he may have given you the wrong information. Oh, that'd be smart. Like the, the incorrect itinerary. <laughs> which is another smoking gun. Thank you for calling the legend of Texas. For the hotel operator or guest room, please select zero. For room Ooh, reservation... Leg- legendary. Select- hmm. Good morning. Thank you for calling. And how may I assist you? 
Hi, I'm looking for Nick. One moment, please. Is this a guest or an employee here? Uh, I'm sorry, it's a guest. Every time. Hey. Hi. Yeah, uh, come on up. Doors open. What? What? Why would you? Who are you talking to? That you're inviting your hotel room. Hmm. Wait, what? Do you think this is Shannon? Who do you think this is? No. What? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I, I don't know. You asked me. You to, just who? You just invited hold, someone up here. Oh, room? hey, hold on one second. Hey, hey, Nick. My yeah, name is yeah. Hi. I know I'm another voice here. I was going to actually begin the conversation, but I was beaten to it by that young lady right there. Does that voice sound familiar? Uh, yeah, that's Leanne, it's my girlfriend. Okay. Um, my again, my name is Kane. I host a radio show, and we do a thing called War of the Roses, where women and men and, and girlfriends, like Leanne have reason to believe that there might be infidelity in their relationship, so they turn to us after, you know, what appears to be several smoking guns. What are you doing in Dallas? A business. With two possible weddings I might be shooting, and that could lead to a third thing. This could be like a huge weekend. If you were telling the truth and you had, you had you know, real legit business, A, you wouldn't be pausing as much, and B, I think you'd be a little more candid about your answers and not so vague. Mm -hmm. So, why are you really there? Why don't you just mind your own business, all right? Uh Okay, I did. This is my business. This is my business, and I want to know who is Shannon. I don't know what you're talking about, and it's not business. You don't know who your ex-wife or wife is, Shannon? You think I want to find out you're married? Are you even still married to this woman? What are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Have you ever been married, Nick? No, I've never been married. Okay. Why did I find a marriage license in your paperwork in the garage? So, so you're going through all my stuff now and making things up? Mm, this is okay. so I'm not Nick, making Nick. things up, and I was trying to clear out space and boxes in the garage. Right, Nick, there's oh, no, and there's a, there's a Nick. Hold on, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you because I need some reciprocity. I, I don't know if I'm using that correctly, but my point is this: Nick, she found your marriage license. You were married to someone named Shannon in 2012. Yes or no? No, none of your business, even if it was. Okay, fine. Fair enough. You're but also, uh, hold on, hold on. Also in your phone, she's also found pictures that you deleted of you and uh, some woman uh, and selfies. They were obviously done in the last 30 days. Otherwise, they would have been deleted, deleted. So that's... Wait, wait what, do you, what do you mean they must have been in the last 30 days? Because you, you can delete sense. pictures from your library, but they're in a deleted folder. And they don't get deleted from that deleted folder for 30 days. So we know whoever this person, this other woman is, you've, you've obviously rendezvoused with her in the last 30 days. And if I had access to your phone... I believe you could probably pull up the information and find out exactly mm-hmm. the date and time and everything else when they were taken. So well, again, I'm gonna that, but... I'm gonna ask you uh, on Leanne's behalf: th- Were you fully honest with her? This is this, this is none of your f- business. Seriously, get off my class. It's my business. Okay, I, and I, and I guess I'm I'm not asking because of me. I'm asking because of Leanne. And it is my then business. I could talk to her. I could talk to her. Then then you call me on my cell phone. And not sneak around and do all this conniving. I'm not sneaking around. Stop projecting. You're a liar. That's You're a great point. Around. Thank you. I. Th- oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. There's nothing he can say now anyway. I found a marriage license. I found pictures of him with another woman. And then he told some lady to come to his hotel room. He uh, left right. the door open. And I like, would, what I more would, can he say? The, there's nothing you can say anyway. So it's better that you just being a quiet right now mm-hmm. because there's nothing you can say and I'm packing my stuff and I'm going to be gone by the time you get back. 
All right, well, I guess I'll have more room in the garage then. Oh, my God. War of the Roses is pre-taped and possibly edited for broadcast with permission granted from all participants. Want more roses? iHeartCaneShow.com. Keyword, roses. Uh, Eric, come here for a second. Eric brought this up this morning. Um, when it comes to being friend zone, not for him because he's obviously got uh, Bay Bear. Yes, I do. Who we love dearly. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, <laughs> the mother of his uh, his son. And so it, 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 the way you, the way you phrase this was brilliant because of the fact that uh, if a guy is friend zoned for any given reason, uh-huh. is there an opportunity to get out of the friend zone? And if there is, what are the odds of him getting out? Exactly. Because guys give up. Yeah, and that's the part that I don't think that women fully grasp, Riley. Mm-hmm. But However, that- we're only going to try so many times before it's just like, oh, well, guess, mm-hmm. guess I'm going to have to hang out here and I'll be Gordo forever. Look, that's I'm not right. And you have to like chill for a year and try to woo this girl. But if she rejects you at first, nicely, yes. I'm saying you should try a little harder, especially if you guys are friends. Because I still think some of the best relationships come from friendships. And it's like, if he's, she's like, well, yeah, no, I don't want to go on this first date. I think it depends on how you try again. Rose, how long were you and Anthony friends for? Oh, uh, we met and then we started talking to each other. Like, yeah. we, it, then, then it was we, instant. Yeah. yeah, then we found out four years later. Yeah, oh, for real. please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. But, but I, in my past, I've dated a guy that I was friends with first. It didn't end well for us. Oh, we don't like him. But no, no, no. I think it can work for people, but this is also a double-edged sword because if you're friend-zoned, you can come out of the friend zone, but sometimes you're going to keep trying and you're never going to get out and you might ruin the friendship that well, way. So you got to be careful. Though. I'm not saying to like, you know, kick yourself when you're down 8,000 times with the girl that's rejecting you. I'm saying maybe two, three times. Hold on. Hey, wh- why, two, why, three why, times? You're making my, a lot of wait. sense. Ian, this, and you, why am I yeah. not making a lot of sense? Ian, you were friend zone for six years? Six years. Wow. <laughs> so Holy we knew each- cow, yeah. you patient, we knew each other. patient man. Yes. <laughs> so we knew each other in grade school, but I wouldn't consider that we were friends uh, really until high school. Um, she'd come and say hello to me, talk to me for a little bit. Um, and then we stayed in close connection in the high school. And then she went off and started dating people kind of in her area. She sports and I was just kind of like a nerdy guy. Yes. Um, <laughs> and then I feel you. <laughs> So I did reach out to her, and, and uh, Rose was right. The you you tell them, and then if they kindly decline, you know, I, I told her I was tired of being put on a chain where I'd be called back whenever it got free. Um, Damn. Damn! Oh, and then but, she's like, <gasps> like a boss. Wait, 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 hang on. Can I ask? Not to interrupt you, Ian, but can I ask this question? Because I think yeah. what you did mm-hmm. is subliminally brilliant. Yes. yes it is. Yep. Because what you did is you made yourself emotionally unavailable to her, and all of a sudden she realized, oh my gosh, maybe I want some Ian in my life forever. Exactly. <laughs> do, do you see what I'm saying? Do you think that that's what Absolutely. happened? Absolutely. It, it it is, but I think the the biggest thing is there was a I think a power struggle in the beginning, and one thing I learned from kind of like these friendships that roll into now that we're engaged is. Um, you know, you really learn patience. And when you get, uh, you start dating a friend, um, there's not that really big roller coaster that you have to deal with with other relationships, trying to understand who they are, what they do. Um, things don't, uh, they're not a struggle. Right. Much, no, you know, I understand. I understand sense. what you're saying. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. But I also think you, you threw her for a loop. Like yeah. she was like, oh, Ian will always be there for me, like he mm-hmm. always has been. And you go, uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Yep, yep. Choo choo trains <laughs> exactly leaving the station. It. Get on it or Take not. Pull the exactly. rug from underneath there. Exactly Listen, congratulations, yep. Ian. I'm glad to hear it, it yeah. worked out for the best, Thank man. My man. My, My man. man. That's brilliant. Hold on. Now, I want uh, Morgan from the female perspective here. You friend zoned yeah. your now husband for four years? Oh, the nerve. Well, yeah. So my husband and I now, we were friends for four years and then. It was always like he had a girlfriend and I didn't have a boyfriend and then it was vice versa. And then finally after the four years, I was with a boyfriend and he was single and we were talking and like it was completely friends and he was like, so when are you going to give me a chance? And I was like, what? Like I, 
I knew we were friends, and, like, I knew, like, I liked him, but I didn't know that he really liked me that way. So, in my situation, it was he, like, I didn't know he liked me that way, so we were only friends, I thought, and then as soon as we were communicating and... He asked me when I was going to give him a chance. I was like, uh, let me make one phone call and we'll make it happen. Oh, my and God. Oh, oh, this is what I'm saying. If you we, don't give yes, up on the I'm friend zone immediately. Yes. So, okay. So yeah, I- it's, it's amazing. We literally were friends and we knew everything about each other. Like, I had no secrets. Like, he had no secrets because we were best friends. Like, we knew everything about each other. So you're saying if Gordo would have told Lizzie McGuire that right away. I, I love you, I'm madly in love with you. <laughs> said, wait and you go to Italy. <laughs> right. Well, in my situation, yeah. If he would have told me from the beginning that he had feelings for me, I would have dropped everything and we would have been together for even longer. Oh, my gosh. See, yeah. the but, friend zone can work. Yeah. <sighs> and we've been now together. We've been married for nine years. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. Seven. That's adorable. Oh, yeah. thank, thank you for sharing yeah, your story, uh, Morgan. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. So what were you going to say, uh, Rose? I, I think, like, if you try and they say no, don't, like, keep actively pursuing. Stay friends and kind of, like, ride the wave and see where it goes because it could potentially. But don't, like, w- like Riley said, woo her. Like, don't constantly bring her flowers or do things like that trying to get her to, to change her mind. Slay like, dragons. instantly. Slay dragons, Ken. It's like I do. Slay that just confused, confused the hell out of me. So don't woo her. I mean, okay, what I'm saying is if she says no and puts you in the friend zone, don't keep persisting. Like, don't keep oh, trying I see what you're because yeah, she's yeah, going to be like, okay, you're just going to make it much. worse. You're just going to make yeah. it, yeah, okay, you're going to be overwhelming. And then yeah. you're going to drive her crazy because yes. I've had enough Gerber daisies. No but more. If, but if you ride the wave, stay friends, do what you're doing, and then eventually be like, okay, like, are we going to do this or not? I think that could be the, the trigger. Like, oh, whoa, yeah, okay, let's yeah. do it. Oh, so so Notre Dame is about the, to speak. The quickly. key is to give attention but not give attention at the same time. There it is, guys. Really That's all you got to do. Yeah. Give well attention, said. then don't give yeah. attention. That makes perfect time. sense. Figure it out. Figure we it. figured out women. There it is. <laughs> A friend borrows money from you, and I know John's going to say, "Well, if gotcha. you and Rose probably too. If you if you loan someone money, don't expect it back." Correct. Yeah. But let's say you expected it back. How much money would it would is the cutoff where you'd be like, you know what? I don't even want to be your friend anymore. Nickel. A nickel. Okay. What is it? 19, 18, 1843? I'll go five hundred, Kane. Okay, five five hundred, John. Yes, Rose. How good of a friend am I? Is this person to you're, me? You're a best friend, Rose. That's why I'm my loaning you best, my best best year, friend, like ten years plus, uh, like high school, known you for forever, and knows all the bones buried in the closet. Type friend. How many bones, Riley? Do you have <laughs> buried? In the plenty, plenty. Bones? I'm kidding. Okay, full skeleton. Let's though. go ahead and strike that from the record, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't want to sit and stand and go. I don't know about any bones in Riley's closet. I'm just saying. Um, uh, okay, let's do this. Let's go middle of the road. Let's say a, a very good acquaintance of yours. Okay, let's say it was me and you. 14 years. Oh, you're fine. Oh, God. That would have to be life-changing money. Life-changing money? Like, you cleared out my bank account. Okay. I couldn't feed my son any more money. Okay. Uh, And, Rose, you said what for for your... Um... I'm gonna go ten thousand. Ten thousand, please. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. So like I if can... it if it was my best friend yes. and it like she needed the money and then she just never paid me back, it would have to be like a large amount for me to never speak to her again. Eight seven seven nine nine five four six eight one. So we went from five hundred. Five hundred <laughs> brought money from Rose. <laughs> ten to grand. ten thousand. Not that I have it. <laughs> to life changing can't feed my son money. Mm. Uh, in order to be a, a best friend, and the uh, here's what I want from you: How, what's your, as you think about this now, what's your limit, and and where would you fall? And if you would please eight seven seven nine nine five four six eight one. I'll give you the answer in just one second. And this comes from Bank of America that did this. Uh, it's called the Friends Again Report, and it shows kind of like the metrics on where we are with social media and yeah. life and how we connect. I mean, it basically confirms what we've already known that. Uh, uh, Reunions at high schools and stuff are dead. Sure, all oh, things. Yeah. Thanks, Facebook, for yeah. nothing. Mm-hmm. And when they when they went in depth on why people stopped becoming friends, they found the number one cause, much like relationships, was money. Well, especially if you if you loan somebody money and then you see them like 
going on trips and mm-hmm. buying new things. Like, yeah, but it's cool. You got those shoes, but you still owe me like 50 bucks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the number that I'm going to give you is going to knock your socks off when I tell you how this breaks down. And the, the number one answer, the number two answer, the number three answer, and the number mm. four answer. And you're going to go, you would break, we, we would not become, stay friends if I owed you how much? Yeah. That's it? And that should give you a clue that Rose, you're a little high. Although, yeah. if I could borrow $9,999. I never I, said I had that money. <laughs> I was just saying. <laughs> uh, good morning, Joseph. How are you? I'm doing good. So let's say you and I, well, we are friends. Uh, let's say we're best friends. And uh, uh, and uh, I borrowed uh, X amount of money from you, but never returned it. What's the minimum that you'd be like, you know what, Kane? Forget you. Goodbye. I'm out. I would say 5000 because Oh, God. Because... I mean, it's not a lot of money. I mean, to some people, it's not a lot of money. I mean, to me, that's not really kind of not a lot of money. But if they don't, if they won't even pay you back a portion of it, I mean, they obviously don't even really care about your friendship anyway. There's a lot to be said about tr- and trust, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I mean, I would even take twenty five hundred. Like even if you gave me back half, I'd be like, all right, cool, man, we're cool. See, Joseph, you know? you're a good dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I'd still be pissed at twenty five hundred. <laughs> well, we have you. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Joseph, I mean, yeah, I'd be still a little bothered. I'd be like, just pay me when you can. But yeah. as long as you pay me half, I'd be like, all right, we're cool, bro. Here, here nice before deal. I give before I give the answer out in the air, I'm turning my microphones off. Okay, I'm just telling this to you, so don't repeat it. Okay. All right, got all right, it. So one third of people would end a friendship if they owed you. What? That's it. That's don't, a good no, don't, change, don't say though. don't say the number. Don't say anything else. Hang on, Joseph. Thanks for calling, man. Have a great day. All right. Have yeah, a good Bye bye. <laughs> wow, what kind You're of friends radio? are these? Uh, Eduardo. Jeez. How's it going? One third of people would end a friendship if you owed them how much? Um, twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. Again. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. I, I, I'd, I'd question you if you were my friend Eduardo and said, "Hey, Kane, can I borrow twenty five hundred? I go. Uh, I'll say okay. I mean, I mean, best is friend. Yeah, like I've known you maybe. Seven, eight plus years. Yeah, I, I would yeah. ask for what though. I just want to. I just. Oh, I have, you have to tell him why. I think you'd have to. Yeah. Yeah, I need to know why. But Eduardo, here I'm going I'm to turn the mics off and don't repeat this number, okay? Uh, but one third of people would end a friendship if you owed them. Wow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, that's that's the number wow. one answer. You wait till I get the, to the next uh, the next couple. Thank you so much for the call. Have a great day. Yeah. You too. Uh, Renee, how are? Good morning. How are you? Is it Renee? Oh, yes, Renee. Yeah. Renee. Yeah. Uh, hey. Renee. So one third of people would end a relationship if you owed them how much? Two hundred. You're getting close, mm. bro. It's a hundred bucks. Seriously? One hundred. One hundred dollars. One. That, and it gets it gets even worse, Renee. Listen, listen how they broke this thing down. Uh, that's three hundred. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my. Uh, oh my god. Thirty six percent said it takes between a hundred and five hundred to end a friendship. So you're kind of in that range. Yeah. Yeah, that happened to me recently when I, I actually painted something for a friend for two hundred dollars. Uh to me it was worth a lot, but they still haven't paid me back. Oh. So it's like Yeah. Are you still friends with them or no? No. You better no. chip that paint off, son. <laughs> yep. I am <laughs> gonna vandalize that. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. All right. oh, All right. wow. <laughs> Renee's Yo, funny Renee. with his jokes today. Har, har, har. Renee, have a great day. Thanks for listening. You too, thanks. Right. He was joking, of course, because he would never do such a thing. Not Change yet. your listeners are compassionate. They're caring. Yeah. They are. Um, Let me, and, and I'm buttering you up here because I don't want to get roasted, but I do want to ask this question because I don't know the answer to it, and I need to turn to you. From Ron, he, uh, he sent an email wanting to know if there is the middle ground of any sort of phone call or anything that happens when you meet somebody on a Bumble or Tinder type dating website and when you meet them in person for the first time. Like call them on the phone before you meet them? Yes. I think that's weird. Why? That just sounds, I don't know, that sounds, you don't need to do that step. Just start texting, then you make plans, and you see each other in person. Well, how the hell do you know it's them? You ask for a photo. You can see the videos on Snapchat to prove it. Rose, what were you going to say? I was going to say, I think a FaceTime might be good, because sometimes you have more chemistry, like, through a screen, like you're able to text, but you can't have a conversation with a person face to face and you would just avoid all that awkwardness. Get okay. that out of the way. So then the awkwardness of seeing them for the first time at the bar or restaurant or yeah. wherever you're going is is directly 
relieved because of the fact that you went ahead and FaceTimed them first. Yeah. I do believe it should. Now, this is this is where I got roasted by John because he goes, uh, th- there should be no FaceTime. There should be no phone call. There should be no text. There should you go right from A to B. No, I said you can text. Like, if you match somebody on Tinder, you can text, add on social media, make sure it's actually them, and then... Me up, but asking for a FaceTime or like a phone call, that to me, it sounds like you're in 1950. If you're on, if you're on any of these, uh, swipeable sites, 877-995-4681. I'm just curious. Would you be, a, would you think it was odd if somebody goes, would you mind a quick phone call or, uh, what? Or if they just called the other blue? I think in a world of catfishing, you have to do this. Because Agreed. So, like, yeah, you can take a picture of anybody and say it's you. You can have anybody make a video and say it's you. Yeah, you know who's tr- pretending but, uh, to be me? James freaking Corden. Yeah, exactly. True. On a TV show. Getting yeah. paid millions mm-hmm. of dollars to be me. Mm-hmm. Carpool karaoke mm-hmm. was your bit. I can't. Yes, it was. I can't wait to pull off his mask like they're doing Scooby-Doo. I didn't say I almost got away with it, too. If it wasn't for you meddling kids, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I want to grab your calls to answer Ron's question, because my, my thing is this. I do believe there is a middle ground that you can go ahead and say, hi, and then prove it's you, and then see if there's any chemistry beyond just typing. Yeah. Yeah. But I just think, I, I just picture calling the phone like you're laying by your bed with a phone plugged in the wall, and just hoping that your mom doesn't pick up, and like, mom, I'm on the phone, sorry. Like something beep in. Like, like laying on your stomach with your yeah, legs your crossed up in the air. Back, going, yeah. Oh, he's so dreamy. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> uh, or, you know what? I also, th- maybe this is what I'm looking for, too. If you didn't do that middle step and, and I went to hell in a handbasket because you didn't do the middle step, you show up and you realize, oh my gosh, this or you is. Did and it was awkward. Huh? Or you did and it was awkward. Okay, I'll do that, too. 877 995 4681. Hey, Danny, good morning. How are you? What's up, guys? Uh, FaceTime is essential. Oh, thank you, sir. I pre, thank you very much. This is, this is exactly yeah. what I was hoping to hear. Why is it essential? I, I like, like someone said earlier, it establishes comfortability. You can also, like, uh, it, it breaks the ice in a big way. Calling, not so much. I hate calling. You don't see their face or anything, but like, you yep. FaceTime, you see their face, you can confirm, like, whether well, they're not, you know, 50 pounds heavier. Um, <laughs> Um, and also, that, that guy, matters, that's Danny. Yeah. Wow. It's all about the heart, hey, man. We're all beautiful on the inside, Danny. Danny. That's the correct answer. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, 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 and also, getting uh, uh, Snapchat and Instagram is also essential if they don't have like an iPhone. Yeah. Uh, I look. I, I'm not. I'm not doing. I just want to confirm, and I also want to make it more comfortable when we do finally meet for the first time. That hey, we've already had some inside jokes yeah. that I can go back to. Exactly. You know what I mean, uh, Danny? Thank you so much. Exactly. I, I appreciate the call, no man. Problem, thank you. Bye, bye. Uh, Amber, good morning. Good morning. So, do you have a, do you have a kind of a strategy when it comes to transitioning from a dating app to actually meeting them in real life? Not really. Um, I mean. I think that the video chatting with FaceTime is wonderful because think about how many people put fake pictures online. You can actually make sure that they're who they say they are. Not only that, but it's a lot easier to write stuff when people can't see you, but it's a lot harder to have a conversation with someone. Yes. So you can always tell by that conversation if you want to move forward or not, instead of having to read it and, you know, be shocked later when it's not who you thought it was. That's exactly right. That's what I'd be worried about, too. Thank you so much. Uh, Jennifer, good morning. Good morning. So you're saying you definitely have to have at least a phone conversation with somebody before you uh, ever met them in person. Heck yes. I do not want to meet somebody with a prepubescent voice. Like, no, I need a man with a man voice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, all right. I mean, yeah. It wouldn't work out. <clears throat> not at all. Um, so it's a voice that would be the deal breaker? Definitely. Like, you could see somebody that's completely hot. Like, tell me that you're going to see a girl online that's completely hot and sounds like one of your male coworkers. Like, no, that's not going to work. So I, so you she, definitely want to know beforehand, <laughs> before you're there, like, oh, no. So she's Mar- What am I doing here? Maria Menounos, and she sounds like Eric when she, <laughs> yeah. when she talks. Deal breaker. <laughs> How about David Beckham, though? He's got kind of a girly PBS voice, doesn't he? He does. But he also I think has a British does. accent. Yeah, but, uh, he, yeah, like but he, he has badass. a nice butt and ass. <laughs> but I thought we just said the voice is what matters. Uh, no, it's, it's overridden by butt and ass. Yeah, okay, it, yeah. can I, Jennifer, just just give me the qualities in order. So is it butt and ass, then voice, or voice, then butt and ass? I think you kind of just have to weigh it all out when you're looking at whoever. Okay. You know, everyone's different, so, you know. Yeah. Oh, bless you uh, for being honest. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Because you were texting... 
and had a slam on the brakes, you should be responsible for paying the deductible. Uh, that's the bottom line. I'm sorry, I'm continuing this conversation that we just had off the air, off, on the air, because I'm I'm yeah. beca- becoming somewhat livid <laughs> at the situation. You, you, yeah, I didn't do anything wrong. I was hit. Like I was. I get that. I did everything I was supposed to. No, you weren't because but you were, you, were you, you admittedly were texting while you were driving, and that's why you looked up I and mean, you slammed on your brakes. Does- no, well, no, not no, not everybody, no. not everybody. No. All right, so let me run, let me run run this down real quick. So Manny calls up here, um, and I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say you were looking for advice on what to do because your boyfriend okay. is extremely mad at you. He has a what car? He he's like a BMW 3 Series, so he's oh. like yeah. Okay. Something that probably wasn't very cheap. I would imagine not. No. Uh, okay. So, no. so, so, why are you driving his car? Well, my car on Friday, like it was like really grinding, like the brakes, and I had to like really hit them hard. And my boyfriend was like, "Oh, you need to take that in." So, I took it in, and they said that it was not even just the brake pads, like it was like. It was grinding like the screws and stuff. I guess it was really oh, bad. So you, you went past the brake pads to the to like the screw parts of the. Okay, oh, okay, all right, all right. So then I so, don't know. All right, so then you had to go work to go to work on Saturday. You take his car and somehow someone magically stops in front of you. You magically put on your brakes and uh, you get rear-ended in his car. Weird. Exactly. Why you exactly. were because well, you, you, you were looking down because you were texting and you had to slam on the brakes. Well, I- no, I mean, I braked. I stopped. I didn't hit the car in front of me. They hit me. Okay, I, I understand I mean, that, which I think would be all fu- fine and good and dandy. You aren't but texting. You're, exactly. Breaking yeah. the law. So, so, when your boy, so the, the issue here, if I'm not mistaken, is your boyfriend wants you to pay the deductible. Which is ridiculous. It's his car. I was but, driving his car. Right. Yeah, but you car. were driving. Yeah. Yes. You were driving, not you, him. You were driving. Okay, now hang on. If if there was nothing at all and you just randomly got rear-ended, I can understand yeah. how there might be a little bit of a debate. That's one thing, but you were texting. But you you admitted admitted to us off the air that you were texting and you looked up and you saw a car stopped in front of you, slammed on the brakes. You didn't hit the car in front of you, but somebody rear-ended you. Yeah, but I did what I was supposed to. I stopped. I got. That's, I stopped no, in time. Okay, you're not oh, supposed no. to be no. texting. Okay, okay. All right, all right. So he goes, "I want my five hundred dollars for the deductible," and you're going this is ridiculous. You're, you're saying this ridiculous. is ridic- this is ridiculous. It's his car. Him? You were driving. You were texting. Yeah. You stopped. You got hit. It was his car, but he was not in it. Well said. Uh, no, this is not even no. Then, it's his car. This is one of I don't things, even know why this is an argument. You like call for advice, and you're not liking the advice you get, so you just can't argue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were, pretty like, much. You were yeah. And we were all like, "Yeah, you should, yeah, you should totally take the deduction." Question: yeah. Yes, Rose. If he was driving your car Ooh. and he was texting you, and he oh, stopped oh, short oh, oh, and got oh, hit, would you expect oh. him to pay, or would you yeah, pay? Yeah. I, 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 it's my car. I would pay. I don't know. Oh, no, you would not. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Right, hold on. 877 <laughs> Look, Mandy, uh, if, you, if you're not going to take our word for it, I believe we're all on the same page here that, that you're responsible. Uh, am I correct or is anybody, yeah. am I misreading anybody in the room? Yeah. Okay. You're responsible. Um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna grab uh, listeners from fans of the show, and I guarantee, you, guarantee to you that they're all going to be on our side, pretty much. Except, I don't think so. Except for your I cousin, mean, it's, okay. who, who may call and be like, oh, I like Mandy. I believe she's right. Right. Yeah. Uh, 877-995-4681. Yeah, what are you laughing at, the text? The text that says, what type of crack is she smoking? Uh, okay, I'd like to... Uh, you are not under the influence of any uh, drugs, right, Mandy? Am I correct on that? that is- no, of course not. No. This is simple. It's his car. Hey, Al, okay. how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. See, see what he did there? I didn't go, hey, bro, Al, what's up? I assumed that Al could be Allison. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so so what happened here very quickly with uh, you and your so, husband? Sh- Mandy is crazy because I literally was driving my husband's truck recently back into another vehicle. And although we are married and although we share everything, the deductible is coming out of my paycheck. This oh, is coming out of my paycheck sure. because I'm the one that was driving his vehicle. Right. And I take full responsibility, even though he's my husband, even though we share our money. Yes. It's still, I'm the one that's handling everything. Mm. Yes. Do you, do you hear that? That's, that's, that's called taking other that's people's feelings. Ridiculous. Feel- what? what? <laughs> oh, my God. You are delusional. Her whole thing out You're of her delusional. paycheck. 
Oh well, my God, it's ridiculous. Also, oh, she paid for it. I have a paycheck. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh my gosh, Al, Al. You are clearly never going to last in this relationship. <laughs> oh, wow. Al, I love you. Thank you for calling. Have a great day. Thanks. Oh did. gosh. Okay. Oh. Way too early. Oh, come on. Yeah, way too yeah. early. Oh, All right, yes. Ashley. Ashley, who's later. whose side are you on here? You're on with Mandy too. Um, so I feel like she's absolutely delusional. Like if you're texting and driving, you obviously admitted to being stupid and texting and driving. Yeah, wow. And the person, the person behind you slammed in you because you hit your brakes really hard. So it's obviously your fault. And the only reason I feel like you're saying that you would pay for your car if your boyfriend was driving is because you don't want to look like a complete idiot because you know you should pay for it. Yeah. Well, that's oh, everybody texts and drives. No, I'm not going to let that. you say that. Me, I'm not going to let you immature. say that. No. Am if I you are that immature to say that your boyfriend has to pay, your relationship is probably about to end. Oh, Ooh. dang! Yikes! Oh, All right, uh, Mandy, or Ashley, can I give you? A, can I get? Can I ask a question? Um, we'll put it on the wall of predictions because right behind John is a wall of predictions, which yes. is pretty sure. damn accurate. <laughs> uh, always accurate. Thank you, you. You say by when do you think that this relationship will be over? If you're going to make such a bold like statement? five minutes, if I was your oh, boyfriend, I would have <laughs> broke up with you the second you told me that I had to pay the deductible. I would have been like, bye, Felicia. <laughs> 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 Slice bread oh, right now. My God. And the reason the reason why your brakes are so low is because you're texting and driving and you have to constantly you know slam on your brakes. I didn't, That's true. I didn't even think about That's that. So That's true. Because you're always slamming on your brakes. Makes sense. Didn't uh huh. Ashley, thank you very much for your insight. I appreciate your call. Yeah, my man. My man. My man. My, man. my, man. Oh, my brain matter is coming out of my ears. <laughs> Who's gonna you know there's gonna be a memo about that. Please no more exploding heads in the studio. Well, Thanks, Mandy. It's tough to clean up out of the walls. Good morning, Sandra. How are you? Good morning. How are you? W- really quickly, you're on with Mandy as well. You heard what happened. She admitted to texting and driving, uh, looked up, slammed on the brakes, got rear-ended in her boyfriend's BMW 3 something or other, and uh, now he wants her to pay the d- deductible. 500 bucks. I I definitely echo what Ashley said. She is oblivious. Yeah. You have to pay. Even aside of texting, if you're driving someone's car and you get into an accident, guess what? You take responsibility for taking that car, and you should pay the deductible. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with that. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. It, it, look, it's exactly. your Exactly. It response. was an accident, and it wasn't my fault. Oh, my it God. It wasn't your boyfriend's fault either. Me. Mm-hmm. It's his yes, car. Mm-hmm. Somewhere. I no an sense. Accident. Go ahead. I understand it's an accident, but if you, even if your boyfriend was driving and he got into an accident, he would have to pay the deductible. So exactly, you got into the accident, you paid a deductible. Yep, there you go. I'm well, with you. A real man would come. Oh my God! Pay oh. Oh. Do not oh. even right. go there. Uh, She's so right about that. Let's lower that five minutes to like three. Yeah. Oh, I feel like yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. Thank you very much, Sandra. Have a fantastic day. Thank Some, you. Someone right man. now, Flo, my, my man. man, Flo from Progressive's head is exploding as well, and, and there's a there's a gecko that's Flo going, going, bang, going bro. bananas. Oh. I wish you the best of luck, Ooh. Mandy. Thanks. Perfect. <laughs> we'll, we'll text you later. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, don't know. No texting wow. and driving, John. No. What do you think makes you more of a uh, kind of a weenie head? Uh, do you think a sitting, if you choose the aisle seat, or do you think choosing the window seat? The window. Why? You control the window, like the actual window itself. Oh. <laughs> oh. Everybody can put the thing I can down. see that. Yeah. You, can, you can ruin it for everybody that what? If you put the shade down, you can ruin everybody to say if they want to see like outside and see where you're going. See? Or if you leave No, I'm the opposite. The sun, the face of everybody else. I'm awful, though. Riley. I'll open one of them. I, oh, no, no. Yes. I want it down. There's two. That, no, that I need it open. No, I want it down. That way I can dim my screen on my uh, iPad so I don't waste the battery. That's why I'm saying if you have the window, you control everything. Fact. There's a little bit. John's kind of right. Always. Passengers who prefer the window seat are more selfish than those who prefer the aisle. People who prefer the aisle are more reserved. There's also a difference in the amount of money, by really? the way, that you make between the two, which is interesting. I wonder which which came first, though. The selfishness or the, the entitlement of I control the shade versus how much you make a year. Because if you don't if you don't have like a huge, serious like uh, I remember making seventeen thousand dollars with my first radio job. Yeah, and I mm-hmm. thought I was king. Hell yep. yeah! Right. Um, and, and so you know, you kind of go watch this. I can close the blinds. Boop. You know, yeah. do you know what I mean? Which came first? But they do say it does have a significant uh, correlation to how much you make a year. Uh, so if you uh, if you like to sit by the window, 
It's also because you like to nest. You like to prefer uh, in your own. You like to exist in your own bubble because you have nobody sitting next to you. True. Because if you sit on the aisle, you got somebody across the aisle, True. and you have somebody next to you, next to you. Hit by the cart. Oh gosh, it's the worst. Trust me, someone with long legs. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. uh, I'll fall asleep, and my sometimes my knee will drift out, and all of a sudden, whomp! Ouch! I get Ew. whacked by the cart. Um, they say uh, aisle passengers are often more sociable and definitely more amenable. Uh, to people who the, to, are more likely to be restless flyers, and they're less adapt. No, that's not true. I'll sleep on a plane. They're less adept to sleeping on planes. I I'll fall asleep on a plane in a second. So if you're if you're thinking about it, there is a little bit of truth to what John said that you have being able to lean against the wall mm -hmm. to go ahead and sleep. You have the freedom of the ability to open or close and control the window, which is huge, right? Um, although the people who get the aisle, I still think this is the best thing ever. Although it's also a curse at the same time. Being able to go to the potty if you have to. And not to bother oh, somebody. Yeah. yeah. Cause I always, ugh, if I ever get the window, I always get stuck, you know, next to the sleepers. So I gotta wake two oh, people up. Worst. Which is terrible. Um, I feel really bad about it. So the Telegraph uh, put together this uh, whole study on it. I just, I love how they just put money into this kind of thing. What should we study today? Oh. <laughs> aisle or window? Which one makes you more crazy? Uh, and it is true that if you are flying first class more often than not, even though it uh, is outside of your budget and household income, yeah, that's like the worst thing you could possibly be. Really? When it, yeah, when it comes to an egomaniac and mm. narcissist. Eh. Well, no, you have a reason, though. Yeah. And your reason is? Well, I fly home because I bring luggage and I bring Chewy. Right. And then takes long to go through the airport, too. So right. that's the only time. And Chewy's got to fit in front of the seat in front yeah. of you. And that doesn't happen if you're flying coach. They charge luggage, too. Exactly. Um, I, so you know how we talked about emojis, how, what you have to go through to get an emoji made and yeah. to get it passed? It has to go through the Panel, Unico right? it's a Unicode Consortium, I think it's what it's called. And it's a group of uh, cell phone companies and all this other all these other people because... The poop emoji on your phone, if you have one carrier, needs to translate to the poop emoji on my phone for my carrier. Otherwise, nothing would suck more if it turned into a, a bad gesture. You know what I mean? Sure. So you go ahead and you do the poop emoji, and all of a sudden... It's the finger. Right. There's a woman in California who's, a, who's brilliant. Because right now, if you think about it, there's no sensible shoe emoji. There's high heels. There's boots. No sneakers. Mm -hmm. There's a sneaker. Um, she doesn't consider sneakers as sensible shoes. She c considers them sneakers. So like a Yeezy then? Uh, no, just like a, kind of like what I'm wearing today. Like these aren't sneakers. They're just comfortable, like leathery shoes. Okay. You know what I'm like talking about? Business cash. Yeah. But they're comfy because they're squishy and, and they're nice. So she's now putting together a, a petition. And I love this. She's, uh, based out of Palo Alto, California. It's, uh, Flory, uh, Hutchinson. And she goes, you know what? I can't stand it. I don't like the fact that there is no comfortable shoe on there that I like to wear. So she started a petition that now has over 313,000 uh, signatures for a comfortable shoe. They're going to petition the consortium. Um, I still am looking for us to get a, uh, maybe we do a petition for a cane show, uh, uh, emoji. Thank we should. Yeah. How cool would that be across, across the globe? That'd be dope. You have all our faces to yeah. go ahead and use. Do it. Or you can just go ahead and download. What is the game? Uh, intern John Beach. That's right. So over 200, what was it, 2,000 downloads in? Yeah, in less than like two I, hours. Uh, yeah. Something like that. So a listener made a, an, a, a game for John where John flies above me on a boardwalk. Yeah. Then it's available in the uh, App Store if you have an iPhone. In, and Google in, Play. Oh, in Google Play. And it's free. Yeah. And what John does is he flies above me. Yep. And you can dump, you, he, you push the dump button and it drops things on Kane's head. Yeah, exactly. Cause I dump John all the time yeah. for, you mm -hmm. know, things that he says that shouldn't be on the air. Correct. And the dump button is a real button. It's a giant red button here that is a profanity delay. But in this sense, it's not. It's in a, it's, it's a hilarious. Is yes. What it is. But I can also fly drones into John's poops. That's true. And shoot them out of the sky as well as John's. It's like real life. Yeah. If you want to download it, what is it called? Intern, Intern John Beach. Intern John Beach. Three words. Yes. Intern, no, four. Intern, John, three. yeah, three. Yeah. yeah. One day I learned to count. <laughs> this is a bizarre love triangle in 2000, 2015. Mm -hmm. And her name, her name is Sophie. Damn it. I, I know. I'm like, please don't. Have, oh, not my daughter's name. So in 2015, Sophie Tanner from uh, the UK vowed to stay faithful to herself when she married herself. We did that. We did this story back in the day. Mm. Uh, it was around the same time the woman married the Eiffel Tower and another woman oh, married yeah. the, uh, the Ferris wheel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And <laughs> and so she said the reason that she married herself in the first place was to stay away from bad relationships. Um, and she emphasized the importance of self love. She said marriage is about self love. It's about staying uh, and as, saying to yourself that uh, your self compassion and self care is important and take care of yourself as a romantic relationship. She married herself. She literally stood up uh, and with herself said I do, and then took two steps over and said I do. <laughs> I well, mean, <laughs> two years later, though, apparently uh, she broke her own vows when she met uh, another guy. <gasps> so this dude uh, was willing, even though she was married to herself, was willing to start uh, dating her and hooking up. And they ended up, uh, they was it five months of a relationship they had together? That's OK. OK. So here here is a woman who married herself is now in a five month relationship with a guy and so she wants more out of that relationship and says, okay, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll reciprocate my love. I'm going to divorce me and leave me for you. Ooh, uh, so then she okay. leaves, she leaves her own marriage to mm -hmm. herself for yes. a guy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then as if it can't get any more insane, they get married. Yeah. And then they break up because he cheats on her. Oh God. And then things go completely bonkers when he, after she leaves him, he marries himself, <laughs> which makes me think that he married yeah. himself just to spite her. Does that make sense? If Are anybody you, went to those weddings, you're horrible friends. Why? You, uh, and your friend marry yourself themselves. If yes. you married yourself, Kane, I would not go to that wedding. Why? I mean, wait. I would at, step in and help you. At first, her concept was good. You know, self love. I want to love myself before anybody else. But then it got all hooey when she got a divorce to herself and married dude, and he cheated on her. Ugh. So you're saying at first that her concept was good. At first, the concept of saying I want to love myself and you know yes. stay away from bad relationships. That part was good. I like that. Uh huh. But the whole hooey of divorcing yourself, then marrying somebody else, and then he cheated on you, and then married himself. That's where it went. See fast. that? But see, I think he cheated on her because obviously, if you're going to marry yourself, you you are kind of I, I'm going to crazy. I didn't say that. <laughs> I'll say it. Okay, John. Yeah. Uh, but then I think he realized, you know, it wasn't working out because I think you kind of got to be a little narcissistic to marry you. And a little crazy. But I don't know if that's what that was about. Like I said, I think it was about just loving herself and it being a symbolism to herself. Yeah. If you have a whole wedding for that. I think that might be a well, little bit. She had a whole wedding. She had a whole wedding oh, for so, it. That's where it's. All right. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, and so then he, he breaks, uh, he cheats on her and, uh, with ultimately. Himself? No, no, no. With somebody else. Okay. And then ends up marrying himself. But I think the last part of him marrying himself was just a way to spite her. If that makes if that you understand what I'm saying yeah, like he's like, oh, I'll show so. you I'll, I'm gonna go marry me now since you married you and yeah. I broke you up from you what yeah huh that's ridiculous but the point is, these people walk, <laughs> these people walk amongst us yeah and they shouldn't be allowed to like, on procreate. a uh, on a daily basis um so I just I got to be honest with you I it's a, I had to read the headline like five times to even understand a story so again she married herself yep uh emphasizing that self love is unconditional mm -hmm. sure and then. She meets a guy that she actually kind of likes. Sure. Falls mm -hmm. in love with him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cheats on her own self. With him. Divorces her own self. Yep. Dates him. Yep. Marries him. He cheats on her. Yeah. They break it off. And uh -huh. then he goes and marries himself. Uh-huh. Ta-da! I mean, do you stand up and bow after that? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I would. But there's four parents that failed in this story. But there's no kids, thank goodness. That's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, but, but still, their parents. Oh failed. my gosh! Speaking of uh, embarrassment and and stuff, the, the guy there was an anniversary post that was uh, trending on Cosmo yesterday uh, because this guy starts hitting. Did you see? Did you see what I'm talking about? Yes. So if you go on, if you go on Facebook, right, mm -hmm. and you're, uh, I'm going to use Rose and Anthony as an example here. Yeah. Uh, and you, and you're like, oh, congratulations to us. We, uh, we've been a couple now for five years and you know, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. And someone posts below that them hitting on you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is, this, shot, bro. this is what I want. I want to know if that's ever happened before. If you're, if you've been in a relationship and you're clearly in a relationship to the point where you're celebrating an anniversary. Yeah. Or maybe it's their birthday, and you're like, happy birthday, lover. You're the best thing ever. And then right below where you wrote that, they're like, damn, you fine. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of hit it, shoddy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so tacky. Don't do that. 877-995-4681. Her name is Haley Thomas. She goes to Texas State University. Hey, hey. 
She wanted to celebrate her four-year anniversary with her boyfriend, uh, Weston McCain. Uh, Weston McCain sounds like a dope name. That's like an actor yeah. name. Yeah. He sounds like an uh, like an action, uh, like a stunt guy. Yeah. Um, so they put a picture on Instagram and on Facebook, and the caption very clearly explains that they're a couple, and then they've been together for four years. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're married. They're dating. Well, uh, Correct. No, yes. And, and, and the, they captioned their photo together. I guess you could say we've been dating forever. F O U R E V E R. Oh, and yeah. in hearts. Hashtag happy anniversary. Shoot mm-hmm. shot. Okay. But wait, wait, wait. Does that not say very clearly that you're in a relationship with them? Yeah. Yeah. But you can still 100%. Shot. Right. And then you get the wiener that goes on here and, uh, and basically hits on her and says, damn, you're fine. Yeah. And, of course, he fires back. Did this guy really try to uh, shoot his shot on my anniversary post, LMAO? Uh-huh. And as of yesterday, I had 31,845 uh, likes. There's yep. a goalie in soccer. Doesn't mean you can't score. Shoot wow. It. Oh, Doesn't John. Mean, no. John. Mm. They're not married. John. Okay. That's out of okay. bounds. Okay. Oh, but this has got to have happened to, uh, this has got to have happened to other people. Um, and the other part is this guy still is DMing, uh, her. Well, then she hasn't blocked him. Well, no, she blocked him. She blocked him now. But uh, I just, I got to tell you, it it must take a certain set to be able to have that. Is it a confidence move or is it a poke in the bear a little bit too? Stupid. We can poke in the bear. Trying to piss off the uh, boyfriend to break him up. Just in general, just kind of be a little thorn in the side. Hey, Darby. Hi. How are you? Good. So you got married and. An ex-boyfriend commented on your wedding picture? Yeah. What did he say? He was like that I look beautiful and that I would look pretty if the end of that was him standing beside me. Are you kidding? Uh. No, I'm being dead serious. It was so crazy. So what did your husband say with regard to what the ex posted? Um, He was actually like really upset. He was like, seriously, why would someone do that? Which I said, I, well, he's kind of, he's kind of crazy. Which I kind of agree with. I, look, it, it does make you look a little nuts, to uh-huh. be quite to be quite honest. Yeah, with you. especially yep. on wedding photos. Yeah, that's weird because that that's a commitment. Yes, right. It's not just four years together. Although four years together is a long time. It is though. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, th- did it, you end up blocking him, or did uh, did he just disappear? Um, I ended up having to block him. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I, if you get a chance to see this online and just just watch the people's reactions once they once they realize he's what he this other guy Thomas posted. Yeah, what are you laughing at? Uh, Jason texted in Kane. Ain't no ring, ain't no thing. Oh wow! Hey. <laughs> okay. Well, Darby wow. had a ring, so there was a thing. Yeah. Well, I so Darby, that. I'm on your side. Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you. John has come up with the idea to test Eric's presidential knowledge. <laughs> With a game called, uh, Were They a President, a Porn Star, or an Actor? I can't wait. Oh, boy. I can't wait. Watch me get all these right, and then Watch. what are you going to say? Even, even better is, is, I did, was running someone past Riley, and she was getting them, <laughs> she's getting them wrong. I did get one really wrong. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. So, there are some names on here. I didn't even know were presidents. I, I had no clue. I had none whatsoever. Are you, ready to, are you ready to play? Yeah, let's go. All right. Jimmy Carter. President. Okay, you were correct on that. That was easy. Well, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted Reagan, right? no, hold on a second. I wanted, I wanted to give you an easy one, just so you know. Nice and simple. Okay. Um, Ronald B. Jeremy. That's a porn star. Not Jeremy. <laughs> wow. Well, that was the one I got wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Riley got it wrong. She was president? I think, I think it's a president. No, I said what? actor. Oh, okay, actor. Oh, Which well, he kind of was. Kind of. Um, Andrew Johnson. That's a president. Wow. It, do you know which one? Uh, Six- around Lincoln. I think oh, around after Lincoln. Lincoln yeah. Six- 16th president. So he's after Lincoln then. <laughs> oh. I'm very impressed. Go and brush his shoulders off. Um, Ulysses S. Grant. That's definitely a president. If he got that wrong, he had to leave the country. I know. I was going to yeah. say, yeah, we'd have to. What war did he fight in, Eric? <laughs> the Civil War. He was there you the, go. President, or the general for the South. <laughs> Martin. I'm are you kidding me? Martin. Not even the North. Oh, Sorry. Oh, oh, get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. You were doing so you well. Were, you were well, nailing it. You had to show off and get it right. I know. Martin Van Buren. Van Buren was definitely a president. Right? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, no. Is that an actor? <laughs> Martin Van Buren. I'm going president. Are you going president? Yes. You are correct. It, it is a president. Mm-hmm. The eighth nice. president. Um, John Holmes. 
That's a president. <laughs> no, it is not. Actually, that's a porn star. Yeah, oh. it is. Oh. I'll check him out real quick. Known, known for his uh, North Pole series. Oh, oh, is he? Okay. And the only reason I know that is because of <laughs> that. Holy oh, shit. Sh- he's wait, like, ha- old wait, school. wait, that's wait. Old that's school. old school. Oh, my. Holy you snorted shit. Like snorted. Snorted. That mustache. Yes, I'm sorry. He's what you would picture when you think of that kind of an actor from the 70s. His, his mustache is die for. He's got, he's got, I mean, I don't know if I could stop staring at the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's got a life of its own. That His mustache could be president. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, <laughs> uh, Peter G. North. No, that's a porn star. No, oh, wow. Know? You are correct. You said that was some conviction. How do you know that? Peter North. Yes. Yep. So, yep. Oh, gotcha. He's legendary. He's second. legendary. Dick Van Dyke. That's an actor. Okay. You're, wow. You, I, you, you did better I'm than I thought. glad you got that one right. Uh, d- better than I thought you did. Uh, what? The North, the North South thing was a little yeah, off. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm just you saying. You were good up until that point. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Uh, the, I, I just don't believe this to be true. I can't, uh, that, that more and more people are now not talking in their own homes to each other. Instead, they're using texts yep. to go back and forth. Um, two thirds of households in the United States <laughs> are now texting people in the same room as they are rather than having a, uh, a, a human conversation with them. Is that true? I've done it. I've in done this, it too. In the same room? Yeah. Like I'm I've, sitting here and you're there and you're there and yes. I'm texting between the... Mm-hmm. Yes, I've done it with my best friend sitting on the couch right next to me. Why? Well, sometimes it's because there's somebody else in the room true. and you don't want them to hear that conversation. And true. other times it's just because we were bored and we were on Facebook. So we just started messaging each other on Facebook. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I just do it to be silly. Just because I'm like, I'll be sitting next to my best friend mm-hmm. and be like, hi. I would be hey. I would be offended doing? if we were sitting in the same room and you wouldn't. Why? Because I would rather you talk to me. And that's what this whole story is about in uh, the New York Times today. So 32% of people admitted to sending a text to someone um, within their home. And of that, the number just shoots up dramatically, especially the younger you are, mm-hmm. of texting literally room to someone in the same in the exact same room. Asking him to get something in the kitchen was, oh, yeah, was, number, good was number two. Like, why get, hey, mom, meatloaf! meatloaf. I'm on now! Well, I, and that's how we used to do it. Now yeah. you'd send, hey, mom, meatloaf. But now, <laughs> like, most of the time, like, people are on their phones all the time. So, I don't know, maybe it's just easier. They're already on the message app, so they just, you know... Send it over instead of talking. Uh, they say it's not a shock to find out that mobile devices are taking over our lives. Um, and it could be that it could actually end. They're worried that it's going to end kind of communi- how, how people communicate and learn to communicate sure. with each other. But more importantly, that people are losing track of body language. So you're misinterpreting what people are when they're when you're actually having a conversation. And someone, do you, have you ever noticed that if they mimic the your, if you, yeah, if they mimic your body language, that's a sign that you're the alpha in mm-hmm. the room. Huh. Next time you're next time you're in a meeting, cross your legs and see if anybody else crosses their legs. Next time you're talking to someone, you know, hold your hands together or put your hands like this. Take you your know. nose. See if they do it. Um, some text coming in saying that we only text uh, to each other rather than talk when we're in a fight. Oh Ooh, that's yeah. Oh, see, so, that's not a good idea because no. you can't tell tone of voice in text. And that, I, that's what I was thinking. Probably it makes it worse, yeah. wouldn't it? You, your fight would just continue and then just get and, more angry. But then here's the thing: you also but. It's, you know you're in a fight with somebody if they're texting you. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, uh, are you angry with me? No, fine. Everything's Oops. fine. Cool. I, I, oh, but th- I'd imagine it's easier to get what you want to say across to when you're texting because they have to read it. Like if you're fighting, you don't have to listen. Uh, it doesn't mean that I read the whole text. I'll be honest no, with you. You don't? You don't have it's to. It's a scroller. I don't read all uh-huh. of it. Oh, gosh. Oh, if it's a scroller? I get, get it. it. For Sorry. Gary. Not going to happen. Um, so I want to do two things here very quickly. One, how dumb can he be? Or oh. she be, and this is this stems from uh, a story that happened a year ago, but it, it kind of came back to life in a, in a different form of a friend of our show who realized that her boyfriend was saving his side chick's information in, yeah. in uh, his phone under Papa John, so that she wouldn't oh know God. what you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and it came out because all of a sudden all these calls were made and coming in from and texted to Papa John's, but there was no pizza exchanged or sauce. Mm. Yeah, or any of it. Or, or breadsticks, sticks, yes. right? Oh, Nothing. Or wings. Or the that chocolate cookie that they have that looks so freaking delicious. Or liter cola. Oh, that's true. Eight seven seven nine nine five four six eight one. Can you top that story? 
And if you can, I want to hear where, uh, what it is. Uh, it, it, Isabel, holy cow. Good morning. Great name, by the way. Good morning. Thank Isab- you. Isabel, your boyfriend sent you a screenshot. Yes. What was of the screen- conversation? Of your uh, conversation between you and he. Mm. Yes. Okay. That's fishy. Because nothing was coming up. It was just, I was getting blank text. So I told him. You know, what did you send me? And so he sends me the screenshot, and it says Jake Saddle. Jake uh, Saddle? And my name is not Jake Saddle, and I was already suspicious because he was texting someone called Jim Beam a lot. Jim Beam? <laughs> Yeah, that's yep. fine. Oh Sounds man, weird I wonder. If, I wonder yeah. if this guy knows the uh, Johnny Walker. Yeah, probably or <laughs> Papa John. And his excuse was, "Oh, my phone's been glitching a lot. I'm texting <laughs> my fraternity brother, uh, Jake Saddle. It must have switched lines or something." Yep, yeah, Jake oh, Saddle. Hate okay. hey, when that happens. Oh man. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I know. I, I'm guessing it was probably her initials, JS. Mm. And so he, yeah, had come, he, yeah, something stupid. So how long did that relationship last? Hopefully not long after that. Um, not much longer after that. Before that, it was a four year relationship. So, oh my gosh, I was how rude. okay with leaving it at that. Good for you, Isabel. <laughs> Jake Saddle, what are you, an adult film Hell star. Yeah. Get out of here! That sounds like a that sounds like a yeah. dirty movie name. Thank you, Isabel. First time caller. Yeah, well yeah, done, oh, Jim Beam. Um, <laughs> Jim Beam. <laughs> really? Hi, Jen. How are you? How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for asking. You had a boyfriend a couple of years ago that was so dumb. What what, ha- what happened? So he, I want to borrow my car that day, and he decided it'd be a smart idea to pick another girl up in her neighborhood, sleep with her in my car with no tinted windows, hmm. and the people he was doing in front of their house, they called the cops. Oh, of course. So the cops came, caught him in the action. And called me at work, and I had to leave her to go get my car. Oh my uh, gosh! What kind of car was it? Wow! And then we were it. That the cops were setting him up, and that it wasn't really happening. No, of course, yeah. yeah. No, why would you care about what kind of car I mean, it was? Is it two seaters, an SUV, a sedan? Like what kind of car? Just, what does it matter? Is it spacious? <laughs> <laughs> it was a fine TC. So oh my gosh! Well, they were flexible. Yeah. Well, Jen, uh, let me tell you, Karma uh, is alive and well. I'm yeah, sure he's getting his, and not in a good way. Uh, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Cause oh, I'm so glad that's done. Yeah. <laughs> good for you. I'm glad to hear that. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Clean that car. You too. Thank yeah, you. Bye. Uh, good morning, Mary. How are you? Just fine. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you for asking. Your boyfriend put his other girlfriend in his phone as what? <laughs> My other. My other. Ah, yeah, the other well, one. Yes. It's going to be your yep. only how soon. Did, now, how did you find out it was your, my other? Well, each evening we both go up to take a shower. Yeah. I'm normally first. Well, this time he went first and his phone started ringing. And at first I didn't answer it and I got suspicious. So I called it back. And she goes, Hi, babe. Is she in the shower? Oh. I've been waiting uh, all day to talk whoa. to you. Oh. And I said, oh my. and I, I continue to let her to speak. And she said, am I going to still see you on Saturday when you're supposed to be working? You are. Uh, and yeah. and uh, he said, yeah, I'll be over around 830. Oh he said, but I'll have God. to leave early because um, mm. we have plans this evening. And uh, I said, who is this? She said, no, who's this? I said, I'm the other. The other. Oh. That's terrible. Oh, like, my gosh. She's like, oh, my God. Yep. Wow. I was like, exactly. yeah. See? Ro- I said, within two hours, he'll be at your house. There you go. Roses in real life right there. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> oh, have, yes. a, have a great day. <sighs> you too, and I'm a first-time caller. And you did great. Hey, hey wait, Kayla. This is this is stupidity at its finest. This is almost as bad as him putting a number in uh, uh, under Papa John's. Kayla, he put his side chick's name in as what? As blocked number. Blocked number. But yet oh, you Lord. could see the number underneath it. <laughs> so well, that's ah, not smart. So, idiot. So, so, oh my god! I don't I don't so, really get it. How is it blocked yeah. if if you can still see the number? Uh-huh. So 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 he yeah. actually assigned the contact name. As first name block, yeah. last name number. So yeah, so this, yeah. this situation was he was still talking to his ex girlfriend, and yeah, I found out yeah, about yeah, it, yeah. and he was like, "Oh, 
I'll, I'll block her number. Don't worry. So then when he thought when it called, it would show that he actually took the initiative and blocked the number, yep. but he didn't. He just put the name as block number. There you yeah. go. Thank you so much for your call. Have a great day. <laughs> uh, by the way, some of these texts are uh, insane as well. Um, I just, I, I, so some I can't say on the air, some I can, uh, including the, uh, wait, including one who got, wait, Stephanie, hold on. Stephanie, your ex got somebody else pregnant, but told you not to worry why? What? <laughs> wait, where, Steph, Steph, your phone's breaking up. Uh, he told me. No, Stephanie, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Stephanie, come back, please. If, if can you I, hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes. No. Uh, ah, uh, poop. Hold on one second. So I guess the he got he got somebody else pregnant but said, "Hey, no, no, it's okay. It's okay." You don't have to get tested. I've yeah. used protection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Sure you did. Wrong that works. with people. Here, hang on hold for just one second. Oh if you're on if you're on hold, stay on hold for just one second because I promised I'd get to the uh this the new dating apps that people are using mm -hmm. or maybe you want to get rid of the person that puts you in under my other uh, you can use Rebound, where if you take a selfie, you get a match, and you can get things going with a 10-second live video, and the app will help you find someone to hang out with right there, right then. So, literally, you take a picture of yourself at that moment, like right now. Ch -ch -ch -ch. I take a picture, and then it will find someone who just took a picture, too, and boom, if they fit the same criteria... You, and I'm not, I'm not gonna, no, 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 no. <laughs> and, then, and then you're instantly connected with a video chat. That's kind of cool. That's that's a neat idea. Yeah. But, however, that's chat roulette waiting to happen all it over sure again. Is. Let's be honest. It sure is. Um, you have spin the bottle, which is a virtual spin the bottle against uh, people that are around you. So it's kind of like Tinder, where it uses your geolocation sure. to figure out where you are. And when you spin the bottle and it let you land on someone, you can then chat with them live for thirty seconds because they're also in the game with you. That's kind of cool. So you're all uh, you're all on the phone at the same time. It's not like they just have a profile up and it's also it. chat roulette. Waiting to happen, but yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. also yep. chat roulette waiting to yep. happen. All right. Whisper, where you are supposed to uh, whisper into oh, your weird. phone your description, and people will pick and decide whether or not they'd like to date you based on your whisper voice. Uh, Which, that okay. sounds like your bones being made into wind chimes in a second. And what would you be <laughs> yeah. whispering? And you know what? Nine times out of ten, people's voices don't match their body. That's what they're supposed to. That's what it's saying. Uh, vouch is another one. Have your friends uh, vouch for you. Vouch allows your friends to go ahead and add to your profile any way they'd like. Now, if you're I'm not if, mad at that. Unless you're friends with John. So. I would be fantastic. Yeah, right. I, would help, I can only imagine what you'd write. Dude. I, am and I dead? Oh, no. Yeah. No. Random, random, random no. Eric, stop. 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 I, I, already gave, I already gave you a random At fact. Mr. Why do I hear Dwayne on Instagram and Twitter? What? M R E R I C K V. It's Cinco Random Facts. Thank you for Google letting Google is ready. Google is ready. What is. Okay. <laughs> Google is ready. Rose, <laughs> Eric v. Rose facts checks <laughs> Eric's random facts. My Cinco Random Facts for today. Number five, numero cinco. Americans can hear a beep in the tone of F. Huh? What? American car horns. Oh, that's right. I totally. Oh, 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 American gosh. car horns beep in the tone of F. Sorry. Americans I hate that can word. hear a beep in the tone of F. I was like, why just us? I totally brain farted yeah. just now. But if you're Canadian, yeah, thanks sorry. for that. Yeah, Canadians, you don't hear that tone F. Number four, <laughs> Eric. Then numero what, what cuatro. Are the cars, then where are they then? American car horns beep in the tone of F. So if you have like a Fiat, then what is it? Wait, pause it's for one second. Tone of F. Can I ask a question? <laughs> what if I drive my American car to Canada? Oh, Valid. <laughs> Does the horn change? No, it doesn't. So then, but you have to drive the other side of the road in Canada. You got to buy a Canadian car, and it'll probably be in a tone of a different F. What? Well, maybe it's in the tone of A. Maybe <laughs> get it. <laughs> 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 okay, if I ever do that joke again, kill me. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Just, in the tone oh, of that F. was a bad joke. <laughs> Numero cuatro, number four. When you die, your hair still grows for a couple of months. See, okay. I number heard it's nails too. Yeah. Ugh. Number three. All right, I'm gonna butcher this one. What? Odontophobia is the fear of teeth. Oh, I, I believe that. And there you go. Uh, like, if you ever kiss somebody and your teeth touch, and it's like, oh, yeah, the oh. yeah. how hard are you kissing somebody that their teeth are touching? What? Um, You've never knocked teeth with anybody before? <laughs> yeah, I've never right done there. that. Sorry, <laughs> I must right. be doing something wrong then. Parents <laughs> number two, numero dos. The first glass of champagne from a bottle gets you the drunkest because it has the most bubbles, and they force your body to absorb alcohol faster. So if you want to get a quick buzz, 
get that first glass and that's oh, I believe that's that. True, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would believe that. So, so the true. bubbles are pushing the alcohol into your bloodstream. Correct. Wow, that's pretty cool. What if you just drink hmm. bubbles and then shots of something, Eric? Can you just do that? You'll get like really, scrubbing really. Scrubbing bubbles and fireball, maybe? Just turn it out there. You can't drink scrubbing bubbles, John. You can drink whatever you want, man. In a ton of that. <laughs> and number one, numero uno okay. of Inc. Mr. Eric uh, five random facts. <laughs> Most kangaroos are left-handed. How do you even know that? Oh, this is today. Oh, no. That's the first thing that pops up. Interesting. They tend to favor their left hands in common tasks. I mean, what are common, common tasks? tasks Let me. Well, that's, I hold on. Reading, writing, arithmetic. Yeah. Like grooming and feeding. I just picture. A, I I don't know why, but I pictured a kangaroo with like the kind of glasses Rose has on, like the librarian glasses, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's sitting down at a desk with a quill pen. Of course. And it like it, it's, it's notes. It's writing out notes, going, oh, I'm using my left hand. For I'm a kangaroo." Mm-hmm. But he can't do it because <laughs> notebooks aren't made for him. That's the worst part. Uh, left handed. I've heard. Wouldn't know. Oh man, that, that was the. I've I thank goodness too. always been right. Anybody on the show left handed? I mm-hmm. am. Rather you are? Southpaw. Do you, do, you, do you find life to be more difficult or no? Not really because I only write with my left hand. I do everything else with my right. Okay. Our, our boss had shoulder surgery and has to be in a <laughs> sling for how long is he in it? For? Uh, six, oh, I think four more months. Four more months? Yeah. Uh, wow. And so um, he he's right-handed. Mm-hmm. And so now he's got to do everything with his left hand. So half the notes he writes to us, I can't read. Right. Because it's, it's, it's so re- weird. It, it really is. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is he trying to say? And I don't know if, like, if I've been fired or if I got a raise yeah. or, or what. What? Have you ever tried to, like, switch it up in the morning and brush your teeth with your left hand? Because oh. it throws me off. Like, I've done it before and it throws me off. Yeah. Let me just tell you right now, I didn't even think about this until the story uh, showed up in uh, the Wall Street Journal yesterday. And somebody sent it to me and said, this is this is going to ruin uh, uh, roses for forever. But autonomous cars and, and, and they exist now to the degree at which they're catching cheaters. Hmm. Oh, I so, suppose. so follow, follow the logic on this. And I, and I don't have a Tesla. I drove one with you. Correct. And that was insane. It was, uh, fast, I heard. To the speed limit, of course. And then <laughs> stop in there. Uh, yeah. uh, I just, I just, I was impressed by, I didn't, I, I just, I was blown away. And Tesla has kind of like this autopilot system, mm-hmm. which I I don't know enough about to, to talk fully about. So I was pulling up uh, videos of people using it. And this guy's on a highway, right? And he's driving. Oh, my God. What this system's aim is, is to stop driver fatigue. So when you're on a motorway like I am now, you can just relax a little bit more. You don't need to be focused on the car in front so much. So when you do get to the kind of twisty B roads and the town driving, you're more fresh. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yes. I'm not actually doing a whole lot of anything. He's doing nothing. Except for talking to you, maintaining eye contact. Yes. That's that's weird. So this guy has a car in what's called autopilot mode. It will hold the lane. Yeah. It will speed up and slow down on the highway. It'll even mm-hmm. do stop and go traffic. And it will, if you put the turn signal on, it will wait until there's a gap in traffic to go ahead and make the lane change or turn. I mean, we're almost uh, there. But here's here's the downside of this whole thing: is lawyers in the United States and across the the globe are using the Tesla autopilot. In court, in divorce cases. Really? Because oh. of the fact the car drove itself, it knew where it was sure. because it needed to know where it was so yeah. it could drive itself. Mm. So they rip mm. the computer out of the car and they go, well, look, your Tesla drove you to Judy's house at uh, 1235 this morning. Makes sense. Holy crap. Mm-hmm. That could also be used for crimes, too. Yeah, true. If, if you think about it. Uh, Tesla isn't commenting on the situation, saying that right now it's a very fuzzy gray area about how much information that it's, uh, it's going to give to, because I guess it's proprietary. But even then, if you get a warrant, I mean, and, and it was a, it was a murder case or something like that, I would imagine a judge would make you hand it over. Or at least. Conscience hopefully would too. Uh, yeah, yes, I'm with you on that. So what they're worried about is these autonomous cars now that are going to be able to drive themselves, yay, for no driver fatigue, for getting there safer, for mm-hmm. maintaining speed limits, for, oh, my mom just emailed me. Nance? Uh, yeah, she did. 
But if you're driving a, a smart car, I'm going to put this story up online for you to read um, with regard to how much information the car actually knows about. And, and even if you have, like, uh, one of them that was mentioned in here is uh, Microsoft Sync. Oh, yeah, I like cars have that, like the Ford ones do. Yeah, Ford, uh, because that, too, also knows where you are, w- sure. when you are. Uh, that's why I love driving my DeLorean. Oh, of course. Around yeah. with Doc. And, and your Model T. He, exactly, and he and I uh, hit 88 miles an hour at midnight. And go back. 1.21 gigawatts. It's exactly mm-hmm. what I need. The Kane Show. Hear more at KaneShow.com. Hit the subscribe button before you go because I would love to have you here. It would be an honor. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I love you and I will see you all in the next one. Mwah.